Hello, you all. It's Mama Love. I have a word I'd like to share, a word of encouragement. Um, as I was sitting here thinking, you know, I have ran across a lot of people um, that says that um, they tend to blame God for a lot of things that don't take place in their life. Um, they tend to blame him for unanswered prayers, um, sicknesses and diseases, um, broken relationships, or just simply not having things like the lack in your life. We seem to blame God for a lot of things. When God said that we ought to always pray and pray without ceasing, and, and we all know that prayer answers a lot of things. God, God uh, answers prayer. And he said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And um, I don't think that God will have us pray to him and say pray and make it a number one uh, priority that we do as a relationship with him. I don't think that he would have us pray to him and not answer. Why would God tell us to pray if he wasn't going to be there to answer? Why would God tell us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Why would God tell us that if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart? Why would God tell us that behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you answer, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. Why would God tell us these things, hallelujah, and not be uh, truth to his own word. Why would God tell us these things? Why would God tell us that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but then leave you? How about maybe we left God? How about we're not in the rightful place that we need to be in order to receive what God has for us? Because one thing about it is, y'all, we need God. God don't need us. He already did what he needed to do. And that's when he went to Calvary and died on the cross. We are his servants. He is not our servants. God is a promise keeper. He never slacks concerning his promises. God is not a liar, nor the son of man that he had should repent. But when we walk away and say things like, it didn't happen because God doesn't care for me. Um, God just don't want me to have it. This is coming upon me because God allowed this. Those that are under the ark of safety, the under the umbrella of Jesus, he said the righteous, uh, the name of Jesus is the strong tower and the righteous run therein and they are safe. And he also said many afflictions, there are many afflictions of the righteous. Many afflictions come upon us all of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us from them all. So a lot of things we cannot blame God for, we need to blame ourselves. Because one thing about it, God said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. We walk away from God. We find ourselves a distance from God. But the thing is, we want the things from God, but we don't want to serve him. We don't, we, we don't want to do right by him. And so we say things like, well, God won't do it for me. Well, I tried it. I'm going to go do it my way. Well, you didn't stand. You didn't stand and still and see the salvation of the Lord. You, your faith wasn't strong enough for you to stand still to see what God could do. Stop walking away from God and then saying God is leaving you. Stop walking away from God and saying and blaming God for the things that you're not even holding fast for, for yourself. If you don't believe the things that God is going to do for you when he said that he would do it, that means you're calling God a liar. God is not a liar. We got to believe in what God says. And we got to have the faith to know that he is going to do these things. Why? Because without faith, like I always say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Another thing we need to stop doing. We need to stop praying in defeat when God has given us the victory. He has give, God has overcome the world. So therefore, we're, we're going to overcome the world. Why? Because we have the Holy Ghost down on the inside of us that cannot fail. There is no failure in God. Hallelujah. So when God, when he overcame that world, overcame the world, that same power that he has, he has given over unto to us. And we have to believe in what we pray and stop praying and defeat and crying and whining when God has given us the tools to fight. We pray and we cry and that's all right. What I'm saying is to cry out to the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But when we cry and when a spiritual warfare going on and it's time for us to fight, there's no need to run back to God and cry when he's giving you the tools to fight. He's giving you power over the enemy. He's giving you power to tread on serpents. And he's giving you the power, why? With the word of God. He's giving you the power with the Holy Ghost to stand still and fight. Hallelujah. And when we need to fight, we don't need to be crying when it's time for a spiritual warfare fight. When it's time to get down to the battle with the enemy, when he's coming up against us, there is no need to pray in defeat. What you do is you pray in victory because God has given us the victory. Hallelujah. When he put his spirit down on the inside of us, he has given us the victory. Why? Because he overcame the world. He is victory. Hallelujah. So if he's victory, what do you think we are as children of God? God is not going to give you a tool to fight with and you not be able to use it. Hallelujah. We ought to know that by now how to use that tool, how to use that weapon, how to, and that weapon and that tool is the word of God. That weapon and that tool is prayer. Hallelujah. It's knowing how to fight the enemy. Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You cannot fight the enemy without the tools. Hallelujah. You have to have the tools to fight them with. But what we got to do is stop going to God with the tools that we have and crying to him. It's like, why are you coming to be crying and I've given you the tools to go fight the enemy? Hallelujah. Stop crying. Stop praying in defeat and start praying in victory. That's when you'll see your prayers get answered. Why? Because that's where your faith lies. Your faith lies in your prayers. Your faith lies in your actions. When you began to act on those things and say, you know what? Satan, you're a liar. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Ain't no weapon formed against me going to prosper. I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because that's who God is and he's not a liar. He never slacks concerning his promises. Hallelujah. He, he does not lie. Nor that he's the son of man that he should repent. But he stands still on his promises and his word goes out and it shall not return unto him void. So stop praying in defeat today. Start praying in victory because when you pray in victory, that means you believe God before he's already done it. And you already know that you won the battle. Why? Because the battle is not yours in the first place. It belongs to the Lord. God bless you in Jesus name.